In problem number 31 of section 3.3, .3, we look at a journey starting at the North Pole that travels down some line of longitude down to the equator and travels uh, 90 degrees around the equator and then back up to the North Pole uh, via some line of longitude. And we're asked first to find uh, piecewise differentiable parameterization for this path and um, secondly to find the total distance traveled. So let's try drawing a picture first. Um, all right, so if we've got x, y, z axes here, we can picture the journey as going, uh, let's say, from z axis down to the x axis, so where y is equal to zero. Uh, Say that the red line is the first leg, and then I'm going to keep z equal to zero and travel just around the equator along the green line for the second leg, and finally back up uh, to the North Pole keeping uh, x, is e x equal to zero. All right, so if we're just going to do this um, piecewise or find a parameterization piecewise, it's probably easiest just to kind of ignore the variable that's equal to zero. It's really if we're trying to parameterize the red line, then we're really just trying to parameterize uh, this curve here, which goes from, uh, well, if we have the x-axis, and the z-axis, red line is going to be going from uh, z equals 1 to x equals 1 along the circle. Now to find parameterization for that, like, uh, we know it's going to be, well, the x-coordinate uh, is going to be some form of cosine. Uh, y-coordinate is going to be sine. And or excuse me, the z coordinate will be sine. The y coordinate is fixed at zero. Now, the only question is what to put in here. We'd like to start our parameterization off at, um, say, zero and go zero to pi over two, pi over two to pi, and then uh, pi to three pi over two. But the problem with that is we can't just put in theta and then let theta go from zero to pi over two. So if we start out letting um, theta contained in the interval 0 to pi over 2, we first notice that it's going to have to be minus theta because we're traveling around the circle in a clockwise direction, not a counterclockwise. And we're also going to have to shift it by pi over 2. And all right, this, so this has the effect of um, traveling around the circle, starting at, well, theta is equal to zero, and then we're starting at pi over two. And as we go to pi over two, then theta gets closer to zero, so we're traveling around it backwards um, from the point uh, z equals one to point x equals one. So that's the first part of our parameterization. Uh, let's write this here. Um, say it's called a parameterization p theta, and we'll write it cosine of negative theta plus pi over 2, 0, sine of negative theta plus pi over 2, and this is if um, Theta is in the interval 0 to pi over 2. All right, let's try to parameterize the uh, green line now. So now we have z is equal to 0. And we're just looking at, um, uh, at the path around the circle from 
or the semicircle from uh, x equals uh, 1, y equals 0 to x equals 0, y equals 1. Um, and we're traveling around that in the usual direction, meaning counterclockwise. So this is actually a really easy one to parameterize. It's just going to be cosine. We're going to have to, again, be a little bit careful about what exactly we put as the argument of these functions. But the general form will be cosine sine 0. And so just that we have, so we have our parameters going from, um, you know, in a continuous interval from 0 to uh, 3 pi over 2. The next step is we, we're going to want theta to be in the interval pi over 2 to pi. Uh, so we don't want theta since we want it to be going in the counterclockwise direction. Um, and here we're going to want to, let's see, we're going to want to add or subtract. We're going to want to subtract pi over 2. So now when we start at uh, pi over 2, we'll be starting um, at the point uh, 1, 0. And as we move closer to pi, uh, the arguments will become closer to pi over 2. So we'll be uh, approaching the point uh, x equals 0, y equals 1. All right, so now we have the second part of our parameterization. So cosine of theta minus 2 in the first coordinate, sine of theta minus pi over 2 in the second, and z is constant at 0. And of course, that's just for theta in the interval pi over 2 to pi. Now, finally, we can look at the um, journey that goes from the equator back up to the North Pole. This is complete, takes place completely in the yz plane. So here, x is equal to 0. And it just goes from uh, the point where y is equal to 1, z is equal to 0, up to the point um, where it crosses the x-axis at z equals 1, y equals 0. So this is pretty much the same problem as the second leg of the journey. Uh, the only difference is now we want to adjust the argument a little bit. So this is going to be cosine of, well, we want theta to be in the interval pi to 3 pi over 2. So we're going to have to subtract off pi. So uh, the x is 0. Uh, now y is going to be cosine. And uh, z will be sine, uh, with both arguments being theta minus pi. So there we have a parameterization for the entire journey. It's uh, piecewise differentiable. I mean, clearly, cosine um, and sine are differentiable, and we're composing them with uh, linear functions. Uh, so yeah, it's piecewise differentiable and describes the entire journey from the North Pole down around the equator back up, uh, back up to the North Pole. So now the third part asks, what is the total distance traveled? Now, one way that we could do this is to use the distance formula and integrate, um, take the, uh, figure out the velocity of each of these functions and then integrate over the magnitude from, you know, first from pi over 0 to pi over 2, pi over 2 to pi, and pi to 3 pi over 2, but it's a lot of work. And if you notice, the journeys are all the same length. I mean, we just found the length of a semicircle from one axis axis to the next, and really all we did is just change variables the entire time, and uh, we had to change the direction once. But this would be a lot easier if we just um, 
notice that the distance is equal to three times, well, three times the uh, distance traveled along any, um, any one of the legs. three times the distance of one leg. All right, well, this is three times the integral from, well, let's just pick the first uh, legs who were integrating from zero to pi over two, just gonna make things a little easier. And we're gonna be integrating over the magnitude of the velocity, so magnitude of, we take the derivative of each component, we get minus, uh, co minus, minus and minus sign, so sine of minus, pi, minus theta plus pi over 2. Uh, 0 comma negative cosine of negative theta plus pi over 2. And it's integrating with respect to theta. Now to compute the magnitude of uh, this vector, the velocity vector, you just square each component, add them up, and take the square root. So square root of sine squared of negative theta plus pi over 2 uh, plus 0 plus uh, negative cosine squared, or just the same as cosine squared, of negative theta plus pi over 2 d theta, and we take the square root. All right, now this is just the Pythagorean theorem, and if we can't see that, then we can just make the substitution u equals uh, minus theta plus pi over 2. You can see that this is just then sine squared of u plus cosine squared of u. So that's just equal to 1. So we're really just looking at the integral of, or three times the integral of 0 to pi over 2 of 1 d theta, which is 3 theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 2, uh, which is 3 pi over 2. 